Please pray with me again. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here. Let your Holy Spirit speak for us, hear for us, do for us. Remind us why we are here, <coughs> who we are, and who we belong to. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. That first candle is the candle of hope. First Advent candle is the candle of hope. It is also considered the candle of the prophets. So, to me and in my mind, it is most appropriate that today we have looked at that scripture. We have looked at that portion of scripture that is from Matthew. Here's my servant whom I've chosen, my beloved, for whom I, with whom my soul is well pleased, was also referred to in Isaiah. That's, that is Matthew quoting Isaiah saying, well, obviously this is the one. At some point when Jesus left town to avoid controversy, left town to, to, to calm things down a little bit, uh, Jesus obviously, though he was obviously Messiah, Son of God, nevertheless, he was humble and peaceful. Our scripture today, I've decided to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, I'm in chapter 1. Let's we'll start at verse 3. We'll read 3 through 9. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if for a little while you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him, even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him. And rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. May God add His blessing to this reading of the Word. That is, that is such a rich, it's a greeting, it's an opening. And yet, you think about it, He's telling people, He's reminding them. These are, these are people that never met Jesus. These are probably Gentiles that He's writing to. Some are, some are not. Uh, even though you haven't seen Jesus, you believe in Him. Even though you've never met Him, you believe in Him. And you have this indescribable, even though you don't see Him now, you have that hope. He's saying that, that, that in Jesus Christ, we are given us a new birth. God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus came at a very dark time in history. Jesus came when there was not a lot of hope. We tend to think... That somehow, there, that somehow God was, was cruel and uncaring in the Old Testament and that God was merciful and loving in the New Testament, that there was some change in God and therefore, if you had to guess that, you'd think, well, then the Old Testament is all full of hellfire and brimstone. The word hell appears in the Old Testament zero times. Doesn't appear there. The word there was Sheol, a Hebrew term, for the underworld, the world of the dead, it was not considered a place of suffering. It was not considered a place of anything. It was considered a place of nothing. They could not perceive themselves as not existing, but they certainly could perceive nothing happening ever. So they had Sheol. For some, it was a, a it was the mark of the end of a life that, that was lived with regret. For others, it was a place of rest. That's what the Old Testament, the New Testament concept of hell, that's where it comes from. And it's a Greco-Roman Hades underworld. It's a Greco-Roman place where, where there are gods that are competing, Zeus and, and Neptune, and, 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 and one gets the Poseidon, Poseidon or Neptune, Zeus gets the heavens, Poseidon or Neptune gets the waters, and, and then the underworld is given, is given to a god named Hades. And they had very little hope. Zeus was not a nice guy. He wasn't going to let you into heaven. Poseidon, you don't want to go in the water. You can't breathe water. 
Uh, so most people were going to go to hell. Most people were going to go to Hades. And so they had very little hope of anything but going to Hades, but having a, an eternity of suffering. All they could hope for is a life that was ended with honor or a life that was, that, that was, uh, that was productive or glorious in its own right or a life of sensual pleasures because after that there was nothing to hope for. There was only Hades. There was only hell. And the, the Pharisees really bought into this because they said, yes, there's hell. And if you don't follow all the rules exactly like we say you should follow them, then that's where you're going to go. Heaven is for good Jews. Heaven is for, for good believers. And it's not for all believers. The Sadducees didn't believe in the afterlife at all. They were very Old Testament. The Pharisees were the ones who said, yeah, there's an afterlife. And if you don't follow our rules, you're not going to you're not going to like it. It's going to be what the Greeks and the Romans say. It's going to be hell. Jesus used the term. He talked about Gehenna. There was a junkyard that was always burning. There was a junkyard, a big, a big vast wasteland that nothing happened on. There were fires going there all the time. Nobody claimed it. It was foul land. It was, it was, it was dirty with dead animals and, and carcasses. And if somebody died a pauper, they might be thrown on the fire. And so that's where, the, where Jesus referred to the fire never goes out and the worm is never quenched. And if you uh, don't hear the gospel, if you don't hear this message of God's love, then you are, are a threat to be cast upon the trash heap of history. No hope. Jesus brought us hope. Jesus made, brought us hope of eternal life, <coughs> hope of salvation. Hope of something better than hell. Jesus came to give us a message of a God that was not, despite what people say about Christians, despite what we might think about pop culture, despite what uh, what the rumor says, Jesus, the God is not sitting there trying to get you into hell, trying to trick you into going to hell, eager to put you in hell. That's not how this works. God was not the one to send us to hell. God was the one to save us from hell. And did so with Jesus Christ. Did so by sending Jesus Christ to give us this hope. And we should be living in this hope right now. Living in it now. By His great mercy, He has given, past tense, current progressive, has given us a new birth into a living hope. Not a dead hope, not a future hope, but a living hope. A living hope. I don't know where you'd be without that hope. I don't know what kind of people we would be without that hope. I don't know. I mean, I know some people that, that have no hope and they're cynical and they're unhappy and they're miserable. Unfortunately, I know some people that supposedly have this hope. They're unhappy and miserable. <laughs> Maybe we don't live into this hope like we should. Maybe we're not getting it. Maybe we're not getting it. It's a hope. It's a, it's a hope that we must share with the world. It is a hope that God has given us. It is supposed to change our lives now. It's supposed to make a difference in our lives now. Paul talked a lot of this hope. Paul said that may the hope of God fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope. First Advent candle is the candle of hope. It is the candle of the prophets. The prophets were hopeful that God would send the Messiah. The prophets were hopeful that sometime, at some point, people would stop fighting and start cooperating. The, the prophets were hopeful that people would realize that God loved them. The prophets were hopeful that people would realize that God loves everyone around them and therefore would treat each other with respect and with love. The prophets were hopeful that God would restore the world to what the world was supposed to be. Prophets were hopeful. Now Jesus has come. And maybe we don't know if we can believe, but we don't know if we can accept, we don't really know. Maybe we're not among those who, though we haven't seen him yet, we believe. Though we don't, though we've never met him yet, we love him. On the other hand, maybe 
we are among those. Because the hope that we have in that, that hope that we have by being believers, by knowing that this world has has is not the end of things. This is not the be all, the end all. There are things that we can't see. There is a world beyond this world. There is a God beyond what we can see who has blessings galore for us. Paul said, I mean, Peter said, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. With this hope that we have in Jesus Christ, even our suffering is redeemed. Even in suffering, we can reach out to others. Even in suffering, we can share this hope. Even in suffering, we can relay the message. Even in suffering, we can know that this is not the end, that this is not everything there is, that in Jesus Christ there is hope. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May we share the hope of Christmas. May we share the hope of Christ this holiday season. Amen.